Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Dr. Kedar Hibare. I'm an interventional pulmonologist at the Narayana Health City in Bangalore. Uh, for the rest of the day, you will be hearing very interesting talks on endobronchial ultrasound, and my talk is on conventional tBNA. So I'm going to go back a little bit to the basics. Uh, this is the hospital from where I come. This is the Narayana uh, Institute of Cardiac Sciences to your left and the Mazumdashaw Medical Center where I work on the right. I bring greetings to you from Bangalore. So let me get to the, uh, you know, talk straight away. So what is eBus? eBus is like this, uh, you know, uh, a Benz car, which is really modern, stylish, and you're able to do a lot of things. But in the era where we are doing, uh, you know, we, are, we have eBus, there's still some degree of, uh, you know, uh, basics that we really need to understand. And my focus is going to be our uh, good old Maruti. So that's what I call the conventional TBNA. So let me take you straight to the uh, presentation where I'm going to be highlighting the prerequisites. I'll briefly run through the lymph node map, the vascular anatomy of uh, station seven, the subcarinal and the right paratracheal. I'll also go to how it's done. I'll speak about the side scope needle technique and uh, very briefly about the you know, preparation of slide. But more importantly, my talk is all about why I continue to do it and how we are rediscovering conventional tBNA in the era of EBUS tBNA. And that, for that, I'll highlight a couple of important points. So uh, this is Pope and Wang. So if you read a lot of the literature on uh, uh, you know, conventional tBNA, this is where our journey started. The guy in the middle is Pope and Wang. He actually has a Wang map. Uh, the first paper that he published on bronchoscopic needle aspiration biopsy of paratracheal tumors is there. Uh, he also has a book co-authored with Dr. Atul Mehta, whom we all very well know. And for his work in conventional tBNA, he was given the Ciaglia Award. Uh, this is how the journey started, a brief history about it. So in the initial days when conventional tBNA was not there, the journey started out with rigid bronchoscopy and rigid needles. So they would first put a rigid barrel and use a needle like this, which was published in American Review of Respiratory Diseases in 1978. And this is called as the Schleifer needle. Of course, as advances started becoming more common, uh, we were able to see the flexible needles also come in and that's the Wang needle. So uh, the next couple of slides are only of historical importance. This is the Wang's map and this is really how the lymph nodes were envisaged to be sampled uh, in the past. These were the stations which Wang proposed should be sampled for, uh, you know, mediastinal, uh, you know, uh, diagnosis, mediastinal disease diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is just the sites uh, numbered, uh, you know, as per the Wang map. However, what we currently follow is the IASLC lymph node map. We know that there are 14 stations and uh, this is basically something that most of you would know about and most commonly sampled are station 7 and 4 are by conventional tBNA. Uh, a lot of people also have a bit of confusion about the midline of, uh, you know, how we go about the border, borders uh, for various stations and it is important to understand that the midline is not the center of the body but at the trachea, it gets shifted to the left side. And this is uh, a slide just to demonstrate that. So if you can actually see the slide, you'll be able to see a line running through the trachea in between. But once we get into the thoracic cavity, it is not strictly a midline, but is pushed to the left side. So that's really the border demarcating the right and left uh, for lymph node station. Uh, it's very, very important to understand the vascular anatomy, and this is the vascular anatomy of station seven, the only two stations which I'm going to concentrate on because that's really what most people who start out with conventional tBNA should be sampling. It's not that they cannot sample others, but it requires a greater understanding of vascular anatomy of other stations and a precision also. So start out with simple cases where lymph nodes seven, station seven and four are, are enlarged. So basically what, what is important to concentrate on this slide is that small dial, which you can see on the right side below, uh, which is pointing between eight and 11. So that's really the area where you are actually going to get inside to sample it. Okay, so for st station four hour, it's going to be between uh, one and two o'clock. Uh, that's really what it is. If you go elsewhere at about three o'clock, you're gonna hit a vessel. For station 4L, it's something that you've got to be really, really careful because that's really where, uh, you know, you have the major vessels, the iotopulmonary lymph node is there. And if you miss that by uh, a few millimeters, you could probably be in a big vessel. And that's something you really have to be careful about and would not recommend the uh, beginners to start with this, but something to consider. I'm going to skip about station uh, 10L, but uh, at 10R is something that you puncture at about 12 o'clock once you are at the 
uh, entrance of the right main bronchus. Okay, so how uh, does it look when you're doing a real time as a, you know insertion? So this is how it is. On the left hand side, you see a four R in a puncture. Uh, the middle photograph showing you a four L puncture, and the uh, uh, picture on the right side showing you a subcranial puncture. These are the indications. I'm pretty sure most of you know it. They're pretty standard. Mediastinal hyaluronic pedinopathy, endobronchial lesions, extrinsic compression of the airway by any peribronchial processes, submucosal disease, peripheral nodules or masses, follow-up of lymphomas and small cell tumors, and the diagnosis and drainage, of course, of mediastinal cysts. Dr. Mehta basically spoke about six T's under which, uh, you know, the entire procedure can be classified. CT evaluation, which is very, very important. You need to study the CD. CT, the type of needle, technique, tissue preparation, tissue interpretation, and a trained assistant. The two needles, the cytology and the histology needles, uh, that's basically how they look. They're a little different in the sense that the 19 uh, gauge uh, is the outer diameter. The 22 is what is inside, and then it comes out, and that's how you take a histology sample. Uh, how we do it, these are basically the steps. Instead of going through the steps, I'm just going to concentrate on a couple of aspects about uh, how the different techniques are very, very important uh, to be done. So these are the, this is a video of the technique. So this is really what is important for you guys to understand. So in the jabbing technique, what you do is the needle hub comes out of the bronchoscope. Sorry. So the needle hub comes out of the bronchoscope and then you are I'm not able to play the video. So I'll just go to this and yeah. So basically what is happening in the jabbing technique is the hub is coming outside, the needle then comes outside and then you push the needle assembly outside. That's really the jabbing technique for you. In the piggyback technique, the needle hub comes outside, the needle comes outside and the entire assembly, including the bronchoscope, get, goes inside. In the hub against the wall technique, what basically happens is that the needle assembly comes out. It is going to the, it's going to the wall of the trachea. And from there, basically what happens is you push the needle outside. And in the cough technique, the very same thing happens except that the patient is asked to cough up. So, uh, let me shift gears. So, this is how the conventional TBNA is done. After that, it's a matter of aspirating your fluid and then going ahead with the uh, you know, procedure to be able to sample and then you know, see those slides make uh, have rows as part of uh, you know entire proceedings the most important thing is why i continue to do it and this is something that i'm going to highlight more uh, what is important to understand is over the years we have these four papers with good lot of data and what we've understood is most of the tissues unlike in the west that are sampled are all uh, you know benign and less cancer though we're starting to see more cancer these days uh, and current's paper actually showed us where there were four groups with conventional TBNA and rows, uh, without rows, and EBUS TBNA with and without rows, that the yield of conventional TBNA with, uh, you know, rows was about 72%. And in fact, it was better, uh, you know, than the EBUS, which scored at about 67%. So finally, the point is, Conventional TBNA is complementary to EBUS rather than competitive. And for station seven and four R, this can be a very, very simple technique, especially for beginners. Uh, of course, apart from that, costs play a uh, you know, huge role. And important to understand that when uh, conventional TBNA is done for nodes more than 1.5 centimeters, the adequacy rate has been reported to be about 95% with the diagnostic yield of about 85%. Uh, I've already spoken, cost is a very, very important concern and it can be something that, uh, you know, you have to factor in, especially if you are in a tier two city or a three city. Uh, important also to continue these skills because there are other complementary procedures like injecting a blue and so on and so forth where uh, conventional TBNA skills become very important. My last couple of slides are about uh, the impact of endobronchial sound and what they found in PGI in this very interesting study is after they got their EBUS, 
uh, they actually found that the efficiency to hit the lymph node and the diagnostic yield actually improved. And this is something that is very, very important. So it is imperative to understand that conventional TBNA skills are going to be complementary rather than com competitive. So what I've basically tried to say is that, uh, you know, conventional TBNA is robust, it's reliable, it's time tested, and probably a Maruti car is not just a Maruti, but probably an ambassador. However, the awe factor never ends. Uh, I'm not downplaying the role of eBus. I'm myself one of the one eBus user, and I understand that it's very, very important skill to have. Uh, it, it makes a huge difference in lung cancer diagnosis and staging. And of course, the awe factor never ends, but you must understand that conventional TBNA skills are important to continue. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the patient hearing. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them.